Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's victim is this Yardworks push mower. Not self-propelled, although it is uh, compatible with a bagger. So it's a two-in-one, meaning it will rear bag. And because it doesn't have a discharge chute on the side, it will mulch. So it'll, it'll mulch or rear bag. Uh, that, that's what designates it a, a two-in-one. If it had a a chute on the side or a door that you could open or lock shut that would make it, make it a three-in-one. Generally they'll mulch, side discharge or rear bag any of the three. So this was uh, part of a another bulk buy pickup truck load full of stuff. This yard works is sold by Canadian Tire here. Yard machines well, made by MTD it has the power mower engine, so this is more of an entry level, entry level machine. It's not a bad looking machine. I mean, it's it's dirty, but uh, it's entry level. So, what we're going to do is a few things actually. I didn't even want to try the gas tank, so I shot a little bit of penetrating oil in the air filter, give it a couple of pulls. Wouldn't start for me. Pulled the wire off. Put my spark checker in line, so it's supposed to be good, like it should be getting spark, but it's not. Uh, sorry, it's supposed to be getting spark, and it is. So I pulled the plug out, and the spark plug wasn't sparking. It was soaked, 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 soaked with old gas and a bunch of water. So we're going to pull the carburetor off, and we're going to drain it, and we're going to clean it. Ethanol fuel is wonderful. <laughs> Sarcastic. Anyways, we're going to do that, and we, we do have to uh, look into an oil leak here. So, in one of my other videos, I'm not sure if it's going to air before this one or after this one, but uh, I'm pressure washing the bottom of this, um, this mower because it was full of oil and grass and garbage. And it was there was oil, lots of oil under there. So when I brought this in the shop just today, I checked the oil, it was empty. I checked where it had been sitting and there was a lot of oil puddled up underneath it. So I tilted it on its side, I hit it with some brake clean, I wiped the bottom of the engine off and then I just let it sit. So about five minutes after I did that I came under and I had a look. I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick that up so I'll get a little light on it. I'm not sure if it's washing or not. A little gray spot there, anyway. Let's see if I can get this any better. There's a little gray spot right here. Right there. That's oil. And this was all completely dry. So the actual engine casting is porous. It's leaking right through the aluminum. I'm going to see if I can save this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get it running. Make sure it runs first before I spend a lot more time on it. I'll get the carb cleaned and we'll do all that and check that out. Get it fired up and running. See if there's any knocks or noises or stupid stuff going on. So if that all checks out, what I'll end up doing is removing the engine from the... I might leave it on. Undecided yet. We're going to flip this thing upside down with all the oil drained and the gasoline drained and everything drained out of it. We're going to flip the whole mower upside down. We're going to sand it. We're going to clean clean it very, very well with uh, brake clean around that porosity. And we're going to JB weld it. Some two-part epoxy. And then I'll fill the oil up. And then I'll let it sit. And it doesn't matter to me if it sits for days. I'll just let it sit and sit and sit to see if we get any oil seepage. And if it clears up the problem, then we're, we're good to go. I'm confident that uh, if the oil doesn't leak out, I'm confident it'll hold. We'll scratch it up nice and rough so the JB Weld's got something to bite to. Yeah, a few things to do. we got to straighten out the little kink in the handlebar here. we got to straighten out the little kink in the lever here. Yeah, a few things. Lubricate stuff and go from there. All right, get you in the stand. We'll get this carburetor off, and we'll see what kind of disaster it is inside there. All right, can you see there? We're going to pop that air cleaner off. 
and the backing and the carburetor and we'll see what's underneath there. Well, we got a foam filter. It's dry. These typically you wash them out with soap and water. Just dish soap in the sink, clean them out. Dribble a little bit of oil in there and I normally throw it in a plastic bag, freezer bag, Ziploc bag, whatever, and I squish it, squish it, don't wring them, but you squish it until the oil goes through it. Just use engine oil. And that uh, is your air filter. A higher end, a little bit, little bit more expensive units will have uh, a pleated paper air filter. It's actually far more common than this. 10 mil. 10 mil. 10 mil. Three tens. This housing does have the primer attached to it. There's our line for the primer hose. Small gasket there. Let's get this out of the way. If I, my arm is blocking you. Oh, pliers. Fair pliers. Come on, off with you. There we go. The primer doesn't leak, it's not cracked. It actually seems to be okay. Let's set that aside for safekeeping. That's a metal spacer block with rubber impregnated gasket surface. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's quick. Quick to build and cheap to build. I do believe we're missing a hose. You see that on camera? On the back of this, this was in that orientation, back of this has got a fitting here and it runs backwards. Let's see if I can get you with it. Get it with the camera. It would run backwards here, and this looks like a crank vent. I'm going to zoom in and see that. Oh, come on. Right there. I believe that's a crank vent. So there should have been a hose that comes this way and goes into the back of the... Uh, it would have come out from the vent and traveled this way into the back of the air filter assembly. We'll have to put something on there. That's your crankcase ventilation. That's what draws the smoke and fumes and mist and everything out of the crankcase when it's running. Got the spring clip there. We'll get that off. I wonder how much gas is in there. I don't think there's much. I didn't put any any in, so. Twist that line a little bit. A pair of needle nose vice grips to use in case, uh, in case that tank wants to continue to flow. I'll probably end up taking the tank off at, at some point, but we'll just pinch this line here. Just get it. We can get that off of there and out of our way. We'll get the carburetor squared away. I do have a pair of nice hose pliers. I just don't have them here. The ends are rounded and they actually capture the hose. You can twist it and it tends not to damage things. I'm going to take this filthy. Okay, first thing I'm going to clean this cup and then I'm going to let a little bit of that fuel drain out of the hose so I can see what's in there. If it's full of junk or if it's got some water in it. We've got a relatively clean cup here. I want to see what comes out of that hose. There's not much in there. <coughs> Just getting a couple of drips. Let me see if we can see that. 
There's some crap floating around in there, but I don't think there's any water. Water's probably in the bottom of the car bowl. <coughs> I'm gonna let that coffee cup set just like that. And uh, if there is any water in it, it'll settle to the bottom. So let's get this out of here. We'll gently remove our governor spring. You don't want to twist and pull too much on these things because we don't want to adjust the tension on it. And it's easier to get it off the back. So get it off the back. Take the tension off. And we can get the a rod in a position where we can pop it straight out of the top. There's a slot in the bracket here. I'm going to pop straight out of the top. There we go. Nothing got mangled. Carp's pretty dirty. There's our float and our needle. Needle looks like it's in good shape. It does have a remov removable jet up inside there. I'm going to pull that out and see if we can get that uh, the tube out of there. Emulsion tube. We're gonna fire it all into the old sonic cleaner and get that bubbling away. All right. So while the uh, ultrasonic cleaner was running, making all kinds of racket back there, took the opportunity to make the uh, to fire up the compressor and get that air filter blown out. Might as well do all the loud things. Well, the camera's off. In the meantime, also I pulled the fuel tank off and I cleaned it out. Inside here, if you take this hose off, inside there's a little insert. It goes into the plastic. And pull that out, and it's a little uh, fuel filter. Because I could feel a restriction in the line, and I wasn't sure what was going on there, because usually it's not. It, there's no filter in there. Usually it's either an inline filter, or there is no filter. Well, this one had one. So, back together it goes. Nothing exciting to see. Carb came out of the ultrasonic cleaner nice and clean. I used a, uh, that's uh what's it called? Simple Green. Simple Green? Simple Green HD Pro. Uh, it's purple and it's supposed to be aluminum safe. If you use the, the actual green stuff, the regular, this would be all black. It could actually eat aluminum, so that's no good. <laughs> We don't want to do that. So what we'll do is we test it. So that's our fuel inlet. This float, the carb's upside down. The float is now up. So in this position, it should be shutting off fuel. So the fuel shouldn't be able to flow through here. So I'll just blow in it with my, just with my mouth. Nothing. And then we'll turn it up. We'll turn it over like this. In this position, the float drops when the fuel bowl is empty and it allows more fuel in. So it's working. These little ports, I ran a wire through there, cleaned everything up. Oh, I forgot to take that out. <sighs> it's a pilot inside here. It's just a passage. <coughs> I better take it out. All right, I popped it out of there. Just took the screw out. I counted how many turns it took to take to remove this. I just popped this out. There's a couple of rings in there, and I just blew through the passages. It was clean in there anyway, so that'll be all right. Now I'm, I've got the emulsion tube dropped in there, and I cleaned that out. Got the main jet back in there. Clean that out with a wire. Now we're just going to drop the bowl on here, and we'll get it back on the machine. A little ring. That's on. We'll just drop our bowl on. On lots of carburetors, this is actually the main jet. 
this carburetor is just a blind, it's just a bolt. So I'm going to just thread that loosely. That's the bolt that holds it together. This is a drain. You want this to be accessible. So, fuel line goes this way. We're going to clock that so you'll be able to see this from the front of the machine. When you look at the front of this machine over here, you'll be able to see this drain and, and drain it out. We'll get that snugged up and then we'll get it back on. That's that. Let's get our linkages back on. So we had, uh, we did our spring last. So we'll get that on there first. Then the rod. Should just drop straight in. I said should just drop, drop straight in. Yeah, now it's fighting me. He needs to go in further than that. There we go. Yay! And we'll get that aligned. Carburetor aligned on our studs. This heat shield is also a gasket. It's a graphite type material. We got our governor attached to our throttle. We've got the governor spring attached on the throttle end and now we have it on the governor end. So that's golden. Yeah, that'll work just fine. I'm gonna pop that fuel line on there. We know it's nice and clean. We know the filter's clean inside the tank. clip that should be good <clears throat> now well this gasket goes on next how's that on do you remember I don't remember it was your job to remember right? That? No, no, that's not it. I'm pretty sure it was like that. This way. That's it. Oh, look at that. Fits nice. Like that. Alright. <laughs> now, if you remember, we got to put a find a tube to go from here to our crankcase vent. Need to go over and see in my stash if I got something that I can use in there that's going to conform nicely. Eh. Should have something. A piece of rubber. All right, I got to go hunting for that. Hang on. All right, that's what I come up with. Unfortunately, the port is three eighths on these. The only thing I had around 3 8 was this fuel injection hose. Like, it's pretty thick. <laughs> and the issue with that was when it relaxed and went its own way, it was actually rubbing on the shaft of the little rod here for the governor. You can't have that. This has to be able to move completely free. It's tuned by spring pressure, so it has to be able to, to move free. So I just popped a little hole in the cover here, put a zip tie in it, snugged it up. That'll be Perfect. It'll work just fine. That The hose that was on here was likely a molded piece of hose. Exactly the right bends, the right curves, and it would fit nicely on there. So, that's that. Going to get that filter oiled up. We're going to put it on there. We're going to put some fuel in it. We're going to see if this thing will blow smoke. Alright, I got my sandwich bag. Got my filter, got some 10W30 in this. We're just gonna 
drizzle a little on here. The oil is what actually keeps the, uh, it traps the dirt as the air goes through it. So we'll just slide that in the plastic baggie. Don't have to zip it up. Just want to massage the filter. You want the oil to go through everything. You want it to be spread through the entire filter evenly. Again, squish it. Don't wring it. If you wring it, it can damage it. These eventually go bad as a consumable part. These filters turn to dust eventually. See what kind of spread we got. Eh, not bad. We'll put a little bit more on there. What I normally like to do is when I get to the point where I figure it's enough, looks good, I will put it between a couple of paper towels and squeeze the ever loving life out of it. So any excess will come out on the paper towel. That way it's not too too oily. There's a fine line. You want it oily, but not dripping. You don't want it soaking. Just massage it. Using a plastic bag certainly keeps your hands a lot cleaner. I do have disposable gloves, but eh, this works just as good. Not everybody's got those little neoprene gloves or whatever, but most people got a sandwich bag. Even any plastic bag, even the ones that your the flyers come in, they, they throw on your front porch. Well, that's nice and even. That looks pretty good. Grab a paper towel here. One. I'll grab another one so I can sandwich it. And we'll just give her a squish. Just want any excess to come out. And we got some out. I'm happy with that. In it goes. Good enough. Give the inside of this filter cover a little wipe. I gotta wash this all down anyways. I pressure washed pressure washed it outside just to get the loose stuff off, but I gotta wash it all down again anyways. We got the rear hooked in. Little pop, that's good. Alright, let's get uh, you in a stand, the mower off the stand, and uh, get it fired up. All right, got the guys changed around. Let's give this a shot. There's only a splash of gas in there. You know, four primes. Cross your fingers. Huh? Yep. Yeah, seems pretty good. Vibrates like hell. <laughs> Fingers are rattling. All right, I did some more exploratory surgery. I had to. This blade is bent. Not only upside down, but it is bent. Pretty good anyways. Well, pretty bad, however you want to look at it. What a mangled mess. <laughs> People that don't know shouldn't do. So anyways, I'm gonna to need to buy a blade for that. But I did find this. That's not right. It's a blade mount. That's not right at all. Not in the least. Well, I'm not sure why that broke, but I wanted to check to see maybe it hit something really hard, shattered this, and possibly bent the crankshaft. So, took it all off, took the spark plug out, and you can't pull it with a cord and look, and you can't do everything at the same time. So, pull the plug out. I got the uh, the recoil starter unbolted, and I've got a socket on my drill. 
That way I can reach over and turn the engine over and look at the crankshaft at the same time. So let's get you zoomed in. So what we're looking for is that crank. Zoom out that crank. We want to check to see if that shaft's moving around. So make sure you focus on it. Guys, where are you looking? Pay attention here. There we go. Okay, you watch. I don't think it's bent. I think it's all right. I think it's all right. I think it's all right. So I'm gonna order a blade mount, a hub, whatever you call them. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I've got parts on order. A new hub with the uh, a blade and a bolt. About a whole a hub set. So it comes with the blade adapter. Comes with the bolt and the basically the retainer. It's a, it's a washer. And I ordered a blade, so. We're gonna get all that in here. So, actually it works out pretty good with that light. That little mark there is what we're concerned with. Now, I decided to do something else. I am not gonna put JB Weld on there. JB Weld hardens up. And with the heating and contracting, heating and contra contracting, it may start to leak anyways, afterwards. So what I decided to do was put some uh, Ultimate Black RTV instead. That'll allow it to flex a little bit. There's no pressure in here. There's no. That's not a, a bearing boss. There's there's no pressure, um, like air pressure, inside there. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. I mean, I'm going to test it anyways. I drain the oil out of it. I'm going to put fresh oil in it after this RTV is cured up, and we'll see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I get it off of there and put something else on there. So I did give it a bit of a scuff with 120, 120 grit paper. I'm gonna give it a little, just a little wash with acetone here. Make sure we've got all of the oil off of there that we want off. I don't want this lifting and peeling. Make sure it's nice and clean. Just takes a second to dry. A little white. I'm just gonna hammer on the RTV. Start with the crack, spread it around a little bit. Oh, that'll be fine. I'll let this set up and cure up. Gotta wait for parts on the rest of this anyways, so. All right, so we're back on this one here. It's been 24 hours that I've had that RTV on the uh, bottom of the crankcase there. And I put oil in it about an hour and a half ago. So I know the uh, RTV was fully cured. We're gonna go underneath here and have a look. See if there's any leakage. Let's get you a picture here. Get set up. Oop, there we go. Not even a sweat. Looks absolutely perfect. Can get you closer, maybe. As long as the camera stays in focus. There we go. Not even a sweat. Perfect. I like that fix. So that's done. The oil is full. And something I wanted to bring to your attention. If you guys got these new machines, or any machine, read the manual because there is an important difference in the way these this oil is supposed to be checked. So it hasn't run. It hasn't fired. And if you look at that dipstick, it's way above the full mark. And there's a reason for that. Let me wipe it off. It 
The instructions say, when you're checking the oil on this, remove the dipstick, give it a wipe, it's nice and dry now, and when you're checking the level, drop it in, do not thread it in. When you pull it out, it's right in between the low and the high. If we were to take this and thread it all the way in, just for, just for fun here, thread it all the way in, and then thread it back out like most people check oil. It's way above the H. It's way too full. So the depth of those threads, three-eighths of an inch or whatever, that's how much over full is going to read. So, what it boils down to is if you check your oil and you thread this all the way in and then unthread it and read it and make sure that the level is correct, you're actually, it's actually too low. You need to have more oil in it than that. So that's a little bit of a info there. Read your manual because a lot of them will state right in the manual not to thread it in. You just rest it on top of wherever that either it's threaded in or if you have the extended dipstick that comes up the side. Most of the time, I'd say at least 75% of the time, you take dipstick out, you wipe it, you drop it in and just let it rest and then you pull it out to check it. Little pro tip there. Anyways, our next step. We're still waiting on that uh, blade adapter and a blade and everything. So, I don't know the history of the machine. It is regular maintenance to adjust your valves on these overhead valves. If you have an OHV on your engine, at some point you need to adjust those valves. So, we'll get you in a stand and we'll get that cover off of there. And we'll have a look-see. Okay, so I got the valve cover off. Four bolts. Pretty simple. There is a... Uh, cardboard paper gasket underneath there. I'm going to reuse it. I'm just going to clean it with brake clean and we'll reuse it. Got my feeler blades out. So the spec was uh, 0.1 millimeters and 0.15 millimeters. So let's see if we can get this without a glare. See at the bottom there is 0.102. That's the closest I've got to 0.1. That also works out to four thousandths of an inch. And 1.52, oh that's a nice shot, 1.52 is six thou. 102 is four thou. So we got to get this engine turned over to top dead center on the compression stroke. So let's do that. I know that following where the carburetor comes in here and where the exhaust comes out, I know that this is the exhaust valve and this is the intake valve. I can actually see like cast bosses in the in the met, uh, metal itself. This is our in exhaust valve. That's our intake valve. That's important because usually the intake valve is tighter than the exhaust valve. And as they wear, typically, the intake valve wears loose and the exhaust valve wears tight. So this seems to always continually get looser as it wears and this gets tighter as it wears. I imagine it's the valve that's working itself into the valve seat this way. It tightens up and you lose all your lash. But anyways, this is under tension. So let's get this turned around here to uh, top dead center. Now I'm going to use a Phillips screwdriver. Be careful when you do this, you don't want to get anything jammed and scratch the cylinder bore or anything. You can use a use a straw if you want, a plastic straw. Not those god-awful paper straws. Ugh, gross. <laughs> so, I've got the plug out. I'm just going to reach in there until the screwdriver touches the top of the piston. There we are. I'm going to rotate the engine over. So we see the exhaust valve is opening, so we know it's still going down, but we know the exhaust valve is starting to open. Here's the piston coming up, just squeezing all that exhaust out of there. Now we see our intake valve opening, the piston is going down, so now sucking in the mixture. And this is going to be our compression stroke. So as the screwdriver tops out here, our intake valve closed. So you just got to run it till the screwdriver stops moving. It, it's not absolutely critical. It's not ignition timing. It's just, you just want to make sure both, both valves are closed. So we're at the top of the piston travel now. Both valves should be closed. We've got no tension on either one of these. So now I'm just gonna check it. I'm not gonna loosen everything yet. Just check first. We're gonna use our four thou or a 0.1 millimeter feeler blade. 
Going to reach up in there, make sure it's between the rocker and the valve stem. Slight amount of drag. Actually, it feels perfect. Don't need to adjust that one. All right. Moving on to our exhaust valve. This is going to be <coughs> our 0.15 or 6,000. Just a slight drag. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't need to adjust them. I don't think anybody's ever adjusted these. And if they haven't, that means that there's not many hours on that engine. Because they wear. There's no wear on these. There's no... They haven't changed their adjustment. Perfect. I'm going to get that uh, valve cover pre prepped, or the rocker cover prepped, and uh, we'll get some RTV on it. We'll wipe this with brake clean. We're going to clean the gasket off with brake clean. Put a little, just a skin of RTV. I'm going to put a little blob there and wipe it with my finger. Just a little skin, just a, a thin skin of RTV, just to put that back on there. Hang oh, yeah, on, we'll get that prepped up and I'll show you. All right, so. I normally just take the tube of uh, RTV and just put some dabs around the surface. Just some dabs every half inch, three quarter inch or so. And then I just take my finger and I just smear it around. So that's just a smear of RTV right where the gasket surface on this part matches the cylinder head. So this has all been wiped down with brake clean. You can use acetone, brake clean, anything that uh, removes oil and dries up. We get that bolt started. I'm not touching the gasket surface yet. We'll get this this one started. It'll get us aligned. It's not gonna be smearing RTV everywhere. That one's started. Now we can just drop that straight down and we know that everything's gonna be aligned up. Always start all the bolts first with your fingers. Always start every one of them. If you've got two bolts in assembly, always start them both before you tighten any down. It never fails. You get to the end and one bolt won't even line up in the hole. Just run these down. This is just a quarter, little quarter inch, basically a screwdriver. Tight enough. That is that. So we know our valves are set. All that good stuff is in great working order. We'll just fire that new spark plug back in there. Yeah, I don't think there's many hours on this machine. Otherwise, there would be, uh, those valves would have been a lot more out of spec. A little snug. Don't go too tight. You'll strip the threads out of the head. There we go. It's good to go. Now... We wait. <laughs> I gotta get the still gotta get the blades and stuff for this, the blade and the hub and the adapter and all that stuff. Other than that, it's ready to go. Wheels are greased. Valves are set. All the maintenance is done. Carb's clean. It's perfect. The cable's been lubed. The cable that uh, it's on the handle to start and stop the mower. That's all been lubed up. Works slick. Works nice. It's uh. It's just not the prettiest thing. All right, so we're gonna basically push this one outside, wait for parts, and I'll fire up the video camera when they come in. All right, guys, it's been a few days, maybe a week or so. I ordered my parts. This is the blade adapter. I ordered a blade adapter kit. It comes with the uh, the new plate, new bolt, and the actual adapter. This happens to be a four, a four point star. So I took some emery cloth and I cleaned the rust off of this shaft. This the old one was all broken and it came off pretty easy, but usually they're <laughs> a bit of an animal to get off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to coat that with uh, a little bit of anti seize just for being a nice guy for the next guy that has to take this off because this is this is a resale mower, so I give her a nice coat of anti seize. That should be good. We'll get our adapter on there. So there's a there's a key keyway in the shaft, and the adapter has a built-in 
built-in key. So, bottomed out, nice. Brand new blade. Blade, the holes of the blade are in the holes of the adapter and there is notches bumps on this plate that hold it on is that uh, go into the same holes we call that tight nice nice and while we're under here let's have a look at our porous engine block repair I'm not seeing any oil not even sweating crankcase is full of oil I think we'll be all right there nice sealed up good and tight no leaky so let's get that mower set back on its uh, back on its own four wheels there we go got a plastic bag over the engine because it sits outside but yeah that's uh, that's the beast rear bagger so it'll mulch or bag does not have a side discharge be a decent little mower for somebody we're gonna call this one done. We know it runs, we fired it up last time. So I might give it a little wash. I'll scrub it down real nice with uh, spray nine, maybe a coat of a quick coat of wax. Give her some lipstick and eye heels. And move on to the next uh, project. Thanks for joining me on this video, guys. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. If you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon to notify you when I upload new videos. Till the next video, take care.